Hello everybody and welcome to our webinar hosted by Quality Assistance. My name is Fabian van der Mers. I'm R&D Technical Leader at Quality Assistance and I will be your moderator today. First of all, let's start with some practical points. The talk entitled Is Moving to BLI Worth It? will be presented by Thomas Henry, R&D Scientist at Quality Assistance. During this 30-minute presentation, you will have the opportunity to ask questions by typing in the Q&A dialog box of the webinar interface. Please make sure to send your question to the host and not the presenter. I will collect them and Thomas will answer them at the end of his talk. Let me now introduce Thomas. After graduating as lab technician in 2015, Thomas completed a master in analytic analytical engineering at the University of Mons in Belgium. In 2017, he joined the strategy and innovation department at Quality Assistance as a R&D scientist. Thomas is in charge of the development of methods to evaluate the quality and efficacy of pharmaceutical products. Among his expertise, Thomas is involved in projects using techniques such as cell-based assay, immunoassay, flow cytometry, or binding assay with Biacore and Octet. Today, Thomas will present several efficient and optimized approaches developed at Quality Assistance for the study of interaction between proteins using Octet systems. First, Thomas will present, the will present the principle of octet technology. Then, he will present different case studies, including the binding of an antibody to the target antigen, the binding to FC gamma and FCRN receptors, the binding to C1Q, and the quantification of a fragment antibody. Finally, he will discuss the performance, advantages, and disadvantages of BLI. Thomas, the stage is yours now. Hi everyone, uh, thanks Fabian for this uh, kind introduction. Um, I will start with a few words about uh, quality assistance. Uh, we are a contract research organization founded in uh, 1982 that provides analytical services to the pharma industry in compliance with EMA and FDA regulation. We are uh, 200 uh, 40 employees based on a single site in Belgium, and we, we work on all therapeutics products from small molecules to biologics, but also cell and uh, gene therapies. If you want to know more about us, feel free to visit our website. So um, I will start by a brief introduction uh, where I will explain why Quality Assistance decided to invest into the octets. Then an explanation of how the BLI technology works will be given to ensure that everybody can uh, understand uh, the next chapter of the presentation. After that, uh, we will attack the main part of the presentation. In the first time, I will show you the result obtained for the kinetics determination. And then I will um, show you the result obtained for the kinetics, uh, the concentration measurement sorry, results. Finally, um, I will finish by a conclusion where the performance of the octet will be evaluated through all the work realized during the implementation of the system. Um, so, uh, let's start for the introduction. Uh, biologics, as you may know, has a huge cl class of uh, complex molecules used in the treatment of a wide range of diseases, including cancer and autoimmune disease. Characterization and quality control of this class of drugs requires the use of innovative techniques such as surface plasma resonance for SPR or bilayer interferometry for um, BLI. While SPR is a technique widely accepted and used in a large number of laboratories, BLI is a relatively new technique. Despite the status of new player, more and more laboratories think about BLI as a complementary or a substitute technique compared with the ISPERA. Similarly to ISPERA, BLI technology offers a label-free assay that provides precise and reliable concentration and kinetics measurement. This can be applied to good all stages of project development from discovery to quality control, including stability studies and batch-to-batch -batch consistency evaluation. We have just decided to invest in the Octet Red uh, 96A models. Uh, these models has eight parallels independent channel allowing maximum speed and flexibility. 
At the end of uh, the analysis, all samples can be retrieved due to the non-destructive sample technology. Finally, this model is completely suitable to operate in a GXP environment and that was very important for us. Different case study will be presented, such as binding to the target to FC gamma receptor to FCRN to C1Q. And finally, an example of concentration assay will also be shown through the dosage of a pragma antibody in order to determine the active concentration concentration of this biomolecule. Uh, but before to start, uh, let's see how the BLI works. This technology offering label free detection measure an optical interference pattern of a white light reflected from two surfaces of a biosensor. As you can see here, you have an internal reference layer located at the very beginning of the optical layer whose position is identical for all type of biosensor and an external layer located after the biocompatible layer, whose position depends on the type of the biosensor, the protein and the protein immobilized at the biosensor surface. As the reflection of the light occurs at two different spots, separated in space with some distance, it will lead to a physical phenomenon called interferences. These interferences are captured by the detector and plotted into a graph called interferogram. In an interferogram, the relative intensity of the reflection captured by the detector will be plotted against the wavelength. As you can see here, the white light is a spectrum ranging from 300NT to 700NT of wavelength. The relative intensity of these interferences will be a function of this wavelength. The shape of interferogram will depend if 100% uh, of interferences are constructive, is the A case uh, you can see on the shame, leading to 100% of relative intensity. If 100% of interferences are destructive, is the C case here, leading to 0% of uh, relative intensity, or if a mix of taste to type occurs is the B case. So um, when an analyte ban binds on the external uh, layer of the biosensor, for example, when the analyte binds to its ligand, it will induce and increase the thickness of the biolayer while the internal reflections stay um, identical. Therefore, the distance between the two surfaces of reflection increase leading to a shift in the interferometry profile, which is measured at the detector. It's the offset um, of all wavelengths, uh, also called nanometer shift, that allow to follow the interaction occurring on the surface of the biosensor. Indeed, the more molecules bind to the surface, the more a shift of this interferometric profile to the right will be observed. Mm, note that the size of the molecule is important too a larger molecule inducing a larger response. Conversely, uh, when the molecule dissociates from the surface, the interferometric profile will move to the left until returning to the, its in initial position when all the molecules are dissociated. In order to uh, generate a conventional association-dissociation curve, as you can see here, um, also called a sensor gram, this wavelength of set is measured in real time. Its amplitude is plotted as a function of time to follow the evolution of interaction in a much more way readable. So, um, as I said before, for many years, monoclonal antibodies have represented a growing category of therapeutics enter entering clinical trials. This status is now well confirmed and more and more products are available on the markets. As a result, the characterization in terms of kinetics and affinity or the determination of the active concentration of this monoclonal antibody have become different K analyses that can be both performed by BLI. I will present in a first time the result generated for kinetics determination. Mm, let's start by one of the most uh, important attributes of this compound, its ability to to bind effectively and specifically to its targets. This leads to a maximum efficiency of the product with low side effect. 
During this study, we analyze two monoclonal antibodies, pemb pembrolizumab or Keytruda targeting PD-1 and adalinumab or Umira targeting TNF-alpha. In practice, we use biosensor pre-coated with anti-humine AGGFC antibodies in order to load the monoclonal antibody. We did a preliminary preliminary test to determine the optimal concentration of monoclonal antibody to ensure a good response in the presence of its targets. Then, um, several dilution of receptor were run over the biosensor. This design, as represented here, allows a correct orientation of the reaction and avoids avidity phenomenon that could occur was used as an analyte. Mm. Based on the sensor gram generated, affinity constant and kinetics constant can be determined using a one-to-one -one math mathematical model. The red curves represent the theoretical one-to-one -one model, while the different colored curves represent the experimental curves. Looking at the result here, it's the uh, result for the interaction between PD-1 and uh, k Trida. Signals are relatively low. Uh, about 0.15 nanometer for the highest concentration with a KD about 3 nanomolars. This can lead to high variability for the lowest concentra concentration, especially if background is not completely stable. When we look at the result um, of the interaction between Humira and uh, TNF-alpha, the dissociation phase is too stable and the limits of the octet are reached for the uh, little KD parameter. As a consequence for this high stability, uh, it's an impossibility for the, soft for the software to calculate reliable, reliable kinetics and affinity constant. Um, both previous cases were common analysis realized with BLI. So here, I want to present uh, a more unusual sample, a bispecific antibody capable to bind at the same time two targets, ER2, a biomarker of breast cancer, and CD3, a receptor on T cells. This kind of sample can be used in the treatment of T cancer as the mechanism of action um, lie to facilitate on the T cell recruitment nearby the tumorous cells. Also, the previous experiments for target analysis were both classical. We studied one interaction per experiment. Here, in this case, we wanted to study both interactions in one experiment to see the impact of the binding of one target on the binding of the, on, of the other target. This kind of study is possible under some conditions. Firstly, the stability of one of the targets has to be stable enough. Indeed, in case of a dissociation occur for the first interaction, while analyzing the second, it will parasite the second interaction. Secondly, the size of the target, especially for the second one, has to be large enough to allow a sufficient signal. Finally, the design of the bispecific must allow a good orientation of the interaction. It is the case here because the fragments for anti-CD3 are uh, on the IFC part of the antibody. In practice, we use biosensor pre-coated with treptavidine in order to load the first target. Then, several dilution of bispecific were run over the biosensor. It allows us to monitor the first interaction. Then, an optimal concentration of FC tag CD3 were passed. We use this tag to artificially increase the molecular weight of the target in order to, general, to generate a sufficient response. Based on the sensor gram generated, affinity constant and kinetic constant can be determined using a heterogeneous ligand mathematical model. This model assumes analyte, analyte binding at two independent ligand sites. That is the case here, especially for CD3. Regarding the result for the first interaction between bispecific and ER2, we saw a very stable interaction that fit one of the previous conditions, leading to a majority KD of nearly 8 picomolar. 
while for the second interaction um, between the bispecific and CD3, we saw an interaction uh, which is closer to a one-to-one -one model, but still a bit distant from it, leading to a majority KD of nearly four nanomolar. If we compare results when interactions are studied separately, one interaction per experiment, we observed similar results for R2 interaction, while CD3 interaction was a different. In particular, the dissociation phase was uh, slower. Um, we will continue by studying one other important attribute of uh, monoclonal antibodies, their ability to bind to FC receptor present on the surface of immune effector cells. For example, activating FC gamma A3A receptor plays a key role in antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity. Moreover, analysis of neonatal FC receptor binding predict the in vivo half life of the antibody. In the following result, we analyze the interaction between Humira and three FC receptor. Practically, we use for FC uh, gamma analysis, Panta is biosensor, where used for both. This biosensor has streptavidin biosensor previously coated with biotinylated antihistidine antibodies. For each analysis, histidine tagged receptor were captured and dilution of monoclonal antibody were run over the biosensor. As previously seen, this design leads to an optimal orientation of the reaction and excludes avidity phenomenon. For the interaction between Humira and FC RAN, we use biosensor coated with streptavidin to load a biotinylated FC RAN receptor. After preliminary experiment to find the optimal concentration, several dilutions of the monoclonal antibody were run over the biosensor. As it is commonly accepted that monoclonal antibody have two FC, FC RN binding sites, a particular attention was paid to the level of immobilized FC RN in order to avoid avidity as much as possible. Furthermore, the inversion of the design was not possible due to the poor signal obtained while FC RN is used as analyte. Um, also based on the sensogram analysis, uh, affinity and kinetics parameter were obtained using a one-to-one -one mathematical model describing the interaction of the monoclonal antibody with the FC gamma R1A, as for the target study. It showed a very good correlation between the experimental curve and the fitting model. About FC, FC gamma R3A interaction, Sensorgram were fit with the steady state affinity model due to the poor quality of the one to one fighting model, especially on the dissociation phase. And so the steady state affinity does not allow the determination of kinetics constant. For both interactions, we evaluated the precision of affinity and or kinetics constant determination during three runs performed by two different analysts. In each run, three independent dilution series of UMIRA were prepared, good, rep good repeatability and intermediate precision were obtained with CV under 20%. You can see that Octet is capable of generating a CV of 4% if you look the dissociation phase um, for the intermediate precision. For the interaction between Humira and Hepsiran, you can see that due to avidity effect, the three upper concentration show a lower quality of fitting, while the four bottom concentration show a really good quality of fitting. So, due to the poor adequation of the highest concentration and to confirm the result given by the one-to-one -one model, an analysis was also performed with the steady state affinity model. As you can see in the result table, it corroborates the result obtained from the 1 1 model. As for FC gamma essay, precision of constant determination was evaluated during three runs performed by two different analysts. In each run, three independent dilution series of 
Jumira were prepared, good repeatability and intermediate precision were obtained with CV, CV under 20%, despite the poor adequation of the fitting in the upper concentration. The last interaction we will study is the analysis of the binding between the constant range of an IgG and the C1Q. It is of capital importance because this interaction defines the CDC activity of an IgG. Indeed, the C1Q is the first protein involved in the enzymatic cascade, leading to the activation of the classic complement pass. This destruction of the cells recognized by the IgG. Thus, the capability of an IgG to link or not the C1Q is crucial. Indeed, the mechanism of action of a wide range of therapeutic molecules is based on the CDC effect, while other ones to avoid this effect, considering it as a side effect. Monitoring the presence or the absence of this interaction is thus crucial. For this interaction, we analyzed the interaction between rituximab, an antibody targeting CD20, and uh, the um, C1Q. Uh, for uh, the first step of the essay consists in a homemade biotinization of the rituximab as the sample is not commercially, commercially biotinylated. The modified rituximab is then loaded with an optimal concentration to biosensor coated with streptavidin. Finally, several dilution of C1Q were run over the loaded sensor. As C1Q has the capacity to bind several IgG due to its confirmation, and as this multivalence can lead to avidity effect, a particular attention was paid to experimental condition in order to avoid this effect as much as possible. Um, as previously, we, determi we determined the affinity and kinetics parameter using a one-to-one -one mathematical model. Um, a KD of nearly three nanomolar was obtained. As discussed before, due to avidity effect, first concentration so shows a lower quality of the fit fitting, while the other concentration show a good quality of fitting. We also evaluated the precision of KD determination uh, during three runs performed by two different analysts in each run a different batch of homemade um, biotinylated rituximab was loaded. Acceptable repeatability and intermediate precision were obtained. Mm, let's talk about uh, the concentration uh, determination uh, now. Um, usually, the concentration of an antibody is determined using a UV dosage. However, this type of dosage often overestimates the concentration as unfold or inactive proteins are taken into account. PLI appear to be a relevant tool to determine the antibody concentration as it only measures the active concentration which is associated to the binding properties. So, in this context, um, we have developed through the ECTET a method to determine the active concentration of a therapeutic molecule targeting FCRN. In this essay, a biotinylated FCRN was loaded at high concentration on a streptavidin biosensor. After, different dilution uh, of the molecule of interest were run over biosensor. We use five concentration uh, for calibration, two for interest control, and one for sample testing. So unlike a kinetic experiment here, only the beginning of the association phase is considered for the analysis. Indeed, the slope of the curve for the first five seconds of association representing the initial binding rate is directly proportional to the concentration, is the red curve you can see um, in this scheme. Slope were plotted as a function of the concentration of the solution uh, to allow a linear regression to determine the standard curve of uh, the essay. 
The binding rate of the deletion serving as interesting control and sample will then reported on the standard curve in order to determine the active concentration of the protein of interest. In order to qualify the method, two runs were performed by uh, two different analysts on five potency levels. Three parameters were evaluated, linearity, accuracy, and precision. As you can see in uh, this table, results obtained for precision and accuracy were both acceptable. Indeed, for all levels, CV and accuracy were below 20%, a value commonly used when validating an analyzer, for example, that comfort us in the good quality of this data. For um, the linearity results, the coefficient of correlation show a good correlation on the entire run studied. In conclusion, through all the experiments uh, described in this uh, presentation, it can be concluded that BLI technology can be used as a precise technique to characterize several types of interaction for biotherapeutics. First, uh, OCTET can be used to monitor the interaction between monoclonal antibodies and their targets. This interaction is crit critical for a monoclonal antibody as it proves the specificity and the efficacy of the product. However, in some cases, the affinity was not accurately determined as the interaction was too stable and uh, KD was not calculated due to technical limitation. Secondly, satisfactory performance for BLI in case of kinetics measurement between IFC part of the monoclonal antibodies and different molecules were demonstrated. However, Humira show very complex kinetics characteristics and binding mechanisms differ according to um, IFC receptors to that. Indeed, while C1Q and FC gamma r one r show kinetics that can be approached by 1-1 fitting model, IFC gamma r can only be evaluated with a steady state affinity model. Furthermore, FC RN can be studied with a one-to-one -one fitting model or with a steady state affinity model. Nevertheless, all of these interactions can be studied with acceptable repeatability and intermediate precision. Note that while the quality of the result obtained for C1Q interaction is a bit lower than the other interaction, it is possible to study this interaction. Indeed, other techniques, such as BIACOR, do not show any responses to, due to a wide range of problems, such as non-specific interaction between C1Q and dextran matrix or inactivation of C1Q when immobilized as a ligand. Finally, the last application for BLI was the determination of the active concentration of a monoclonal antibody through concentration analysis. BLI appears as an appropriate method for an accurate and a precise quantification of monoclonal antibody. However, precision of the method was better using biocore analysis. Moreover, Baker has also the advantage to allow the determination of a concentration without the need of a calibration curve. Furthermore, PLI has some advantage compared to ESPIR. The absence of fluidic in BLI allows the analysis of a wide range of crude samples, have a buffer effect and permit to recover precious samples. According to the, mod the model of the octets, uh, the analysis can be done with up to 96 biosensors at the same time, redu reducing the analysis time and is mainly interesting during screening step. The cost by sample is uh, way lower than ESPIR, especially if biosensor regeneration can be performed. Nevertheless, octet has also some disadvantages. The use with up to 96 biosensors can lead to variability because all the analyze does not occur in the same place, comparing to ESPIR, where all the analyses happen at the same flow cells. When the analysis time is longer, evaporation can occur in the plate. 
An evaporation cover can be used, but it's an expensive one-shot consumable. And at least, moreover, uh, we observed some shortage in region well in case of um, very long uh, analysis. So it's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you, Thomas, for this very interesting presentation, and thank you all for your interest. Uh, we received several questions during this webinar. Thomas is now going to answer some of them, and the remaining will be answered later by email, as we won't have enough time to cover all of them. So, first question. Uh, you mentioned during the presentation that FCRN has two binding sites on IgG antibody. Wouldn't it be more relevant to use a bivalent fitting model for this interaction instead of the one-to-one -one model? Um, indeed, uh, if we follow the theory in this case, we should have used the bivalent model as we did not um, immobilize the multivalent molecule. Uh, but there is not a consensus of which model to use to fit this interaction. Mm, one to one model is frequently used for FCRN interaction as it gives um, reliable results that are uh, easy to analyze. Um, and a uh, heterogeneous ligand model can also be used as FCRN uh, is a um, heteromedimer ligand. However, pyvalent and um, heterogeneous model have the disadvantage to give two sets of data for kinetics and affinity constant that can be difficult to um, interpret it. And uh, furthermore, uh, with our optimization of the experimental condition, the one-to-one -one, uh, model gave acceptable results, confirmed by the steady state affinity uh, with the advantage to allow kinetics and affinity um, determination. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Uh, the second question is, uh, you observe a low signal for the interaction between PD-1 and k -trida. As this low signal is due to the low molecular weight of PD-1, uh, did you try to reverse the design and use the k as analyte and PD-1 as ligand? Um, yeah, indeed, this reverse design could be used, uh, but there is a risk to measure avidity. Um, as k is uh, multivalent. Uh, when possible, we prefer to immobilize, immobilize the multivalent uh, molecule to uh, simply avoid this avidity phenomenon. Okay, thanks. Uh, time for one last question. Uh, for the C1Q interaction, precision is a bit lower compared with the other assays. Uh, is it linked to the fact that you have to uh, biotinylate uh, the antibody? And uh, how do you control the biotinylation level and the antibody concentration after this modification? Of course, uh, there is an impact of the uh, biotinylation of the rituximab because we modify the sample uh, before uh, analysis. Mm, furthermore, we use a commercial kit with purification columns and the uh, efficiency of these columns uh, is unknown. Mm, however, we did a lot of control to ensure that this impact is minimum. Uh, first, uh, the experimental conditions are chosen to mainly link one biotin with one antibody. And the protocol gave us a calculation to determine the um, biotin antibody ratio. This was also checked by uh, mass spectrometry. Um, then, uh, to uh, guarantee the concentration of the um, biotinylated rituximab, we did two dosages. A first one with a UV measurement to know the um, a total concentration of protein, and then we realize a CFCR in biocore with a streptavidin chip to uh, determine uh, the real concentration of uh, biotinylated rituximab. I think all of this control allowed to normalize the concentration um, uh, before the analysis of the sample. 
Thank you, Thomas. Uh, I think our time is up now. Once more, we would like to thank you for your attendance. Please note that the slides of the presentation will be sent to all participants in the next few days, together with a link to access the recorded session. Of course, feel free to contact us if you need additional information or for further requests. Thank you again for your interest, everybody, and good afternoon.